Hello and welcome back. This is problem G, longest path from Atkoda Educational DP contest. The problem states that there is a directed graph G with n vertices and m edges. The vertices are numbered from 1 to n, and there are m edges where the ith directed edge goes from vertex xi to yi. And the graph does not contain a directed cycle, that means that this is a directed acyclic graph. And we need to find the length of the longest directed path in this graph. This is the question and the length of the directed path is the number of edges in it. The constraints are n up to 10 is to 5 as well as the number of edges and all the pairs of edges are distinct and the graph is a directed acyclic graph. Now let's try to understand this properties a bit better. Since we are given a directed acyclic graph, that means this does not contain any cycle. And finding out the longest path need uh, needs us to find out. Uh, we, we need to first of all fix what should be the starting point of this path so we are going to find out the longest path in this graph for that we need to fix the starting point and if we fix the starting point and keep on going on to the next node of that starting point let's say we started at u then v was neighbor of u then we again went on to to the next node and next node and unless and until we find a node where there is no adjacent nodes available then this uh, would be the longest path starting with that particular node and we since this is a directed acyclic graph we will not end up in a cycle hence this would terminate at some node where there is no adjacent node available now this is the main property for directed acyclic graph now to find out the longest path as i already told you we start at some node let's say this one we go to its neighbor there could be multiple options available for the neighbor of the starting node let's say s for each of them we will perform a recursive dfs and find out what is the maximum path that we can go up to if we start at this node s this will eventually lead us to some same node and end up at a node where there is no adjacent available and this can be done using dfs we will call a dfs function let's say go of u which gives us the maximum path length from node u starting from node u obviously the answer for any node with no adjacent elements would be one this would again be one sorry it not it would not be one so this would be zero because we are counting edges so there are no edges from here hence the maximum path or length would be zero one from here two for here because this would be updated with so this would basically mean go of two the function that we are evaluating would be one plus go of one go of one is evaluated as one hence this would be evaluated as two this is the main idea for finding out the longest path for each of the starting points and we need to do this for each of the nodes from 1 to n now there could be alternate alternate solution where we can order the nodes in some particular fashion so that the edges are always present from left to right and this helps us to determine the order in which we need to find out the these values which 
you are doing it recursively here but this topological sorting helps us to find out the solution in an iterative manner so to update the answer for say this was the starting node we know the we don't know the answer for this node but we need to know the answer for this node to update the answer for this eventually leads us to saying that we need to know what is the answer for the rightmost node and this is zero from this we can update so essentially we need to reverse the edges and update the answer for neighbors these are the two things we would need to do if we are going to use iterative topological sorting approach top-down approach is simply uh, using a recursive function so if we fix the starting node as node s and let's say go of s is the max length path from node s then s can have so many choices c which is adjacent or a children of node s c belongs to the adjacency list of node s so this can be formulated as follows so of s would be one edge which is this edge which is the node that we are adding in the path for which we need to take maximum from so this one accounts for this edge and this path length would be one plus the path length from that corresponding adjacent node c is an adjacent node of node s and this is the main recurrence for finding that now the one thing that we need to understand is we don't need to find out the answer for all the starting nodes from 1 to n this is because since this is a directed acyclic graph even if we start at any node s and find out the answers corresponding answers for maximum path from that node to the other nodes this will eventually computing the answer for node s will compute the answer for all of its nodes which are lying in the path from that node and terminating somewhere right and this will be solved just by calling this function and the next time this is called let's say this was node t and the next time go of t is called this would already be computed and can be written in order one time hence say we are saying that we need to find out the answer for all starting positions but since this is a directed acyclic graph and we can memoize the results so that the dynamic programming approach using this recurrence that we saw will compute the answer for all the nodes only once so no recomputation would be required since this is an overlapping subproblem now let's look at the c++ implementation using topological sorting approach so we input n and m number of nodes and the edges then m edges are input using u and v and we create the edges and list in this graph g which is a vector of array of vectors next up we will find out the topological sorting of this let's look at that implementation so to find out the topological sort we will store that topological sorting in this component 
which is a vector and we will iterate through all the nodes from 1 to n if it is not visited we will perform the dfs from that node and this dfs will basically visit all the non-visited nodes using recursive approach and after it is visited we will add that particular node in the component since this order is a reverse order so if the graph looked like this one two and three then in this component we would have been pushed three first then two then one and since this is a reverse of the uh, ordering that we want hence we will reverse it at the end now uh, once topological sorting order is found out we will iterate over that order and since say this was x1 x2 x3 and x this was the topological ordering first of all we will update the answer for node xi which is variable x here um, by updating the answer for all of its neighbors so adj is a neighbor of node x and we will update the answer for that using the answer for node x that we already know using the same recurrence relation as we saw and since tpo5 denotes what is the maximum length path starting from node i so we need to find out the maximum for all the nodes between 1 and n so this would be the final answer and that, that is it about the iterative solution now let's look at the recursive top down approach here also we will take input n and m the same adjacency list is created we will initialize the tp array with minus one which is an impossible value to understand visited and unvisited states for each of the starting positions i from one to n we will call the recursive function which will return us the maximum length path path from node i starting from node i and we will maximize the answer with that answer which is written from the recurrence now let's look at the recurrence if this is a already visited state Uh, we can return answer straight away or we can compute the answer by updating the answer from all of its neighbors so u has a neighbor v we will to find out the maximum answer starting at u we will take this edge and find out the answer for its neighbor and maximize it with the final answer and memoize it at the end and return from return the value for that particular node this is how the recursive solution is going to look like it is much simpler and straightforward approach than this topological sorting order and the time complexity for this would be order n plus m because even if you are calling this function n times since this is already memoized if, if a particular node u calls a lot of nodes below it and next time this node is called then it would be written in constant time even if this can take order n time but whenever a subsident node is ask the value for that is now asked we can write an answer using this memoist part hence uh, and the entire edges would be iterated only once because each state is visited exactly once and each state is a unique one and each state has some fixed amount of iteration which is equals to the length of the adjacency list of that particular node Hence, in total, the 
this traversals so this for loop this for loop would be run exactly summation of the length of the adjacent list of node i where i is from 1 to n and summation of adjacent list of all the nodes is exactly m which is the number of edges in the graph hence the total time complexity would be order n plus m okay that's it about this video if you found this useful or if you have any doubts or suggestions regarding this do let me know in the comments thank you